Reading Hamp. Get tips and advice from thought leaders from around the globe that will guide you to the next destination in your career. And now, your host, Katrina Brittingham. Hello, hello, hello. This is Katrina with another episode of Career GPS. And I am here, or will be here, with our guest, expert Susan Ibitz. I am so excited for this show. Uh, she has a very, very interesting bio, and she talks about um, behavioral hacking. And to be able to use that to be successful in your interview. And you know that the interview is an essential part of getting a job search because after you get past the resume, you get past the job search itself and get that phone call, you are sitting in front of someone and trying to convince them to hire you. And her bio is, did you ever meet a behavior, a human behavior hacker? And I love that introduction to a bio. It's the first bio that I saw that actually had an introduction to it. And it sums up what we're going to be talking about. And it says, some people hack computers. Our guest, Susan Ibitz, hacks humans. Through research and teaching, she works on unlocking the science behind human behavior, micro-expression, body language, deception detection, statement analysis, face reading, and a word that I'm going to try not to butcher, uh, physiognomy, uh, MPA, and personality types. Susan has trained, consulted, and worked with people in fields such as journalists and producers, politicians and political campaigns, law enforcement, realtors, lawyers, market research, insurance fraud, headhunters, matchmakers, managers, medical field professionals, sperm donor selection, couples compatibilities, life, love and life sales teams, job seekers, human resources professionals, negotiation, hospitality, and customer-oriented services. Hi. Uh, well, a human behavior hacker is a person who does weird things and people like it. Um, uh, for many years, uh, I was a private consultant. So when I decided to do things more publicly, I started talking with clients and people in general and like, well, what I do is a profi I'm a profiler and I see, because I read micro expression, the panic and the fear on the people. So I was talking with friends and so like, you know what? I'm scaring customers away. I'm scaring future dates away. So what I can do? Mm -hmm. And one of my friends says, well, uh, most people hack computers. You hack humans. And like, oh my God, I'm a human behavior hacker. And that's how my title come up. You don't have any university who have it. You don't have any other place you're going to find a human behavior hacker. But here I am. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. And so as a human behavior hacker, how can um, you help our listeners with the job interview um, with that skill? Well, today is difficult not to find someone on the media, and it's difficult not to Google somebody's name and find a picture. So I says, you don't need to know somebody prior to going to meet with them. But it's really important that you have a comprehensive, a comprehensive uh, knowledge of how you're going to approach the people. The golden rule is to talk to people how you want to be talked. But we take the platinum rule to the next level. <clears throat> well, you talk to people how they need to be talked. If a person has small ears and oh, big ears is how the antennas, how they intake information how the shape of the eyebrows, meaning that how they process information and how is the proxemic. So if I know, for example, you're a visual person and you lack facts and data, I'm not going to tell you a story about how I get to the point that I am. I need to tell you one, two, three. That's what I can do for you. 
And if I know that your proxemic is uh, be more a reserved person and a cold person, I'm not going to take it personal. But if your proxemic says that you go to a really friendly approach really fast, I cannot misunderstand that because you was friendly with me, that means that you are going to take me for the job. I need to make more questions and I need to make sure that I can reel the situation to the, to, to the point where I can leave the place with the job interview with you on a place that I give you all the information that I, I guess you want to need before I say goodbye. Another mm -hmm. thing is if you receive an email saying, well, they decided to go with another candidate is not the same that we decided to go with another candidate. When they say they, the person who's writing the email is not including themselves on the idea. And decision is a thought, it's not an action, meaning the other candidate hasn't taken the offer or maybe is not being put an offer by writing. So you still have a chance to say, okay, you decided or they decided to go with another candidate. What was on my interview, on my resume, who wasn't good enough for the position? Well, we don't think that you have enough uh, management uh, skills. Well, I'm actually on, in the middle of a master or a training for management. And like, oh, you didn't put that in your resume. Well, since I haven't uh, graduated yet, yet, I didn't put it. So no is not the last option you have. Most people, when they say no, or they interpret it, an answer as a no, they think that it's done, nothing can be done. Uh, you have a yes, you have a no, it's the same option. You still have doors open to negotiate a situation. It's about how you understand and how you, what you do with the information you have in front of you. That's what we teach, that's what we tell people. Nothing is done until somebody else took the position and is on the desk. Right. So I like what you said that when you can read uh, what's going on and, and you see that there are a certain type of personality, you can get what's, what's going on. So you can tell if there's a change in the interview um, by their personality types, like people who are um, a certain way, they're, like you said, naturally, like, you know, friendly and bring you in. You can tell if that interview turns because they won't be as friendly and as open. <laughs> uh, you know what, Katrina, you and I, we never met in person, no? So no. we talk through through email, we text, we exchange information. I mess it up with the time of the show. So you can see I'm more a person who's about the journey than the destination. <laughs> so I usually late to everything, to your interview too. I'm sorry to your listeners and you too. too. So if I says, okay, I took a class on body language and micro expression. It's great. You have a mm -hmm. huge tool to go to life and to go to any job interview, but what happened before? So when right. people says, oh, I know body language, or I took a class online in, in micro expression and says, okay, what you do when you need to communicate with somebody in an email? When somebody says, uh, we, I, house, home, work, job, they're different things. House right. is where you get your clothes, home is the place where I have my heart. So. The linguistic and the analysis of the language is extremely important. And people must be thinking on your audience, what is this woman talking with such an accent? Well, not being from this country in being English, not my first language, allow me to pay attention to words in a way the other people don't. And on top of that, I do face reading of physiognomy who has been around us for more than 5,000 years who is the ability to understand and have a GPS to your brain. Micro expressions mm -hmm. is a GPS to your emotions. And micro expressions are international. Body language is not international, but you have certain things that we do with our body who are all over the place. And on mm -hmm. top of this, I do personality types. Most people say, well, introversion is to be socially shy. Extroversion is to be extremely friendly. I know people who is extrovert and they're not friendly. I know people who is introvert and socially shy. 
my case, for example, I'm an introvert. What mm -hmm. is an introvert? It's one of the best known miscon misconceptions in people. An introvert is a person who recoup energy being away from others. An extrovert right. is, a per is a person who recoup energy being around others. Now, I'm an introvert who is not socially shy, but I'm socially weird. I always ended up with my food in my mouth because I always ended up saying things that I shouldn't be saying or curse a lot. And I always ended up with people saying, what is wrong with you? You hit your head? So I believe, I strongly believe, and it's a personal belief, that you cannot go out there knowing only one channel on communication. In order to comprehend someone in front of you, from the point that you're going to accept a job interview, you go going through a job interview and you take a job, the only way to communicate is to understand what is going on with the person in front of you in a whole. I agree. I totally agree with that. And and like you said, I I find that people do misinterpret introverts um, because I am one too. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> um, and the thing about it is, I, like you said, we process our day and we get re-energized when we move away from the crowd. Um, and that sometimes that can be misinterpreted because it's like, okay, I have to refresh myself. I need to rejuvenate. I need to get by myself. So there are sometimes when people think that you're standoffish just because like, okay, um, I call it sensory overload. Once I get to a certain point, I, I have to walk away from things. I need to get myself together. <laughs> I need to never happen to you that you're five minutes away to go to a networking event and you have been with clients, training, talking with people. It's like around 5.55 and you're two foot away from the door and suddenly you look on the couch and you say, yeah, a glass of wine and some opera and a nice book is the best <laughs> option now. And you know that you shouldn't have gone. You know that... The, the right thing to do is follow the compromise to do to do to go to that point but you're so drained you're so tired that you cannot do it because you need to recharge because maybe it's tuesday and you still have three days on the week that you need to keep going and you cannot drag yourself to go out because you're tired and it's it's okay we need to own it that's what it says when you gonna know someone when you need to communicate with someone is not only how that person is it's important right. to tell others how we are and it's right. nothing wrong with who we are if i can tell you you know what katrina i'm an introvert i'm an extremely introvert to the point that i'm living in the middle of the forest my house is in the forest is half an acre uh i don't have neighbors around i live by myself i love it i have a huge mm -hmm. library I read all the time, and in order to be able to talk to you, to be present when I'm with you, because introvert doesn't mean that we are not present when we're talking with others. We are really present, is the way we need to recharge, is telling you, I'm an introvert, I'm an INTJ on the myers break. I'm a kind of weirdo, I'm a visual person, so if you wanna talk to me, if you want me to get engaged in a project, you wanna get me engaged on a new job, Please show me, show me the people, show me where I'm going to be working, who I'm going to be working with. That's save you a lot of time. And that's give you a free check to tell me the same things. So you know how much time we save from these awkward conversations when you met someone on the first time saying like, hi, I'm Susan Ivitz. That's how I process information. That's who I am. And I think it's going to be easy for us to work together if you know this in advance. Never happened to me that somebody doesn't open to. And from there, we have an excellent relationship, work-wise or personal. And I, and I think that's good to have because um, I, I find that um, I tell my, my clients, too, to be honest in the interview when they ask you for your strengths and your weaknesses. That's the time that these things come up, um, you know, and it's not necessarily, oh, a weakness for me, but it's what someone will perceive a weakness. 
So my my number one thing is I would tell people, I said, my weakness is that sometimes I get into sensory overload and I have to go by myself. I am a visual learner. And I was like, so I have to... I have to be able to see it. I'm a pictures girl. So I need the graphs. I need the, the pictures. You cannot give me um, processes and procedures that's all just words because um, you're going to lose me. Um, <laughs> I need to have some breakup in there. I need to have some pictures in there um, and everything like that so I can get to, um, you know, to, to where I need. But on the plus side is that I am very process driven. Once I look at the process, I have the process down, I'm going to follow that process. And so, you know, and I ask a lot of questions. So being honest in an interview on how you work, they can pretty much build a team around you to get you to get the work done that needs to get done. Like, so if you're talking to the hiring manager, they know exactly how to deal with you when you start working. And you know what? Um, I would t say this from both sides. As a manager, if you're going to hire someone, putting six months on training you and you quitting because the job you took is not your career, you're not driven and in love with what you do, is as difficult and problematic as is for you as an employee. Because you're not a temp employee, it's not going to look good in your resume that every six months you change jobs. Right. So if the place you're going to work is not your environment, and I talk to women when they say, well, I've been out of job for a long time because I decided to be a stay-at-home mom, and now I'm going to take every job they put in front of me. Like, nope. The skills you develop as a mom who stay home is the perfect skills to be the best assistant ever even if you never was before, because putting the kids to bed, managing the doctor's appointment, your husband's uh, laundry, everything required to be organized. So when you're going to talk to someone, be honest about what happened before, what is going on, because if you're going to change jobs all the time, it's not going to look good for you. And if you're going to leave your kids and you're going to be crying every time that you leave your kids to go to a place that you don't feel is pleasant, and it's Monday morning coming and you don't want to go to work, you have two problems is to deal with those emotions and to look for another job. Right. Right. So that actually goes with two things. Number one, corporate culture. Is this culture a good fit for my personality, for how I work, for how I do things? And also not just accepting any job. And I, I tell my clients, don't be desperate for any job. I know that we have bills to pay and this and the third, but if you take the time and you're patient and you evaluate the situations well and you say, am I getting this job because this is a job I want to do or is this I'm getting a job just to get any job? Because like you said, if you're just getting any job, three months, six months down the line, you're going to be searching for another job. So and you want to make sure you, you do have that a right. Yeah, if you have a small kid, and for you it's important if one of your kids gets sick or to get to the violin concert at 3 p.m. on a Friday, you need to tell that to your boss and says, it's not the amount of time I'm going to be here, it's then I'm going to be there, present, and it's going to be the quality of time. But if I need to be lying, then I have a doctor appointment or I have a flu because you want to be part of your kid's life, there's nothing wrong with that. As women, we need to deal with a lot of things. So if for you, it's important to be present, ask for part-time, ask for working on Fridays from home. If the tradition from your family is 5 p.m., go to the cinema and go, go for burgers, but your job is one hour away. So be open about what are going to be the conditions. Nobody's going to say no to you because you talk about it. It's going to be worse situation if you bring it during the process where you're inside the job and you need to be flipping because what happened is we get turned to. And it's happened with men too. I, I have a lot of friends who are divorced that and they're extremely present on their life of their kids and they want to be on the soccer game and they want to take the kids to basketball and says, as a man, when you ask for time off, to be part of your kid's life. This is, oh, you have a date. 
tiger. Like, no, I'm going to go to my kid's soccer plane. There's nothing wrong with that. So we right. need to learn how to balance our personal life with the job who pay the checks. Right. And so, and that's, that's about the, the culture to see if the company has a good work-life practice. And so you can get that through the interview, especially with the hiring manager, um, as far as um, whether work-life balance is um, honored. The, the, the issue with that is, is sometimes you have managers who are honest about work-life balance, and you'll have some that will say, oh, yeah, we have great work-life balance because they want your skills. They want you in the company, and then you'll find that there is no balance. And some, so sometimes you cannot avoid that. But like you said, being honest up front will put you 99% of the time in a place where you want to be. Because like you said, if you're a strong candidate, people are, people are going to make concession for you to give you a flexible uh, work schedule. As long as you're getting your job done when you're on, on the premises, um, they will give you that flexibility so you can handle your, your family um, situations. And you don't need to have a PhD or be a master in uh, quantum physics to be the ideal candidate for a position. When I was looking for my personal assistant two years ago, I need somebody who is well-driven. And that's where I found Elba, and she become my right hand. If she leaves mm -hmm. me, I don't know, I'm going to get depressed for six months. She, <laughs> and, and the reason I hire her, she's a stay-at-home mom. She, at the, at the moment that I met her, she have a one year, one and a half year old, a six month baby, and she was handled everything. And like, oh my God, if you can handle that, you can handle me because I'm a big kid. So <laughs> she was the strong candidate, not for the reason the other candidates who like, oh, I can type as many words a minute and I can do this and that. No, she understood me. Right. She got me. When I talked to her, we went through the, her daily options. Her mom was, was helping with the babies. She was handled everything that needed to be handled. And today, doesn't matter what time of the day I call her, maybe one of the kids are going to be crying on the phone, but she gets the job done. She carried the baby with one hand and typing on the computer with the other one. So what maybe for other people would be an inconvenience, she knew how to sell herself in a way that uh, if I can manage all this madness, I can manage your madness too. And she does. And it's great. That's awesome. And, and so that is the thing too. Every hiring manager, even if you're going for the same type of roles that you had before, are looking for different things. And it, it's a thing of, like you said, do you get me? Do you get where my need is? Do you get my pain point? Um, but I, I do want to go, um, I, well, we're going to go into break for it in, in, a, in a couple seconds, but I do want to get to the rest of the questions because I, I think that they, it would be good to go into um, deeper into um, the topic of the human behavior hacker. Um, so we're just going to take um, a moment and take a break from our sponsor. Great. Thank you. Do you need a certified award-winning resume writing or career coaching service to help build your professional brand and help you get hired faster? Then you need VentureReady.net. Let the professional staff guide you step-by-step step to land you your perfect dream job. Why go anyplace else? We've helped many people just like you develop a strategy to help you succeed. That's VentureReady.net. Let us convince you by calling 1-888-712-4956. That's VentureReady.net. The complete package for any career path you take. All right, that was our sponsor, uh, Venture Ready LLC. So if you need um, help with uh, resume writing, career coaching, um, Venture Ready LLC can meet your need. So thank you so much for uh, our sponsor who uh, is uh, paying our bills today. <laughs> Um, and we are back with Susan Ibitz. Um, and I just wanted to go into the next um, question um, for uh, what is a behavior, a human behavior hacker, excuse me. And just to ask, why this as a career? Well, I didn't know there was a career being weird. 
I always, most of the time, I sign my articles and my blog saying, please be as weird as I am. And I embrace it. I like it. Uh, and I found out there is people that maybe is not as weird as I am, but they want to, and they embrace <laughs> it. So I, as I say in the beginning, when I was telling people that I'm a profiler, they run away. But when you put it in a way that people can process So Hello. when you can put it, yeah, okay. uh, when you can put it, in, when you can put it in a way that people can process, it's easy for them. So, uh, a career in human behavior hacker is a person who can teach you, understand, and consult you, consulting you, and how to better communicate with others. Even though for a date or you want to build an empire, you need to know your people. You need to know how to talk to them. You need to know how to better understand what is the situation. If I'm going to have a critical meeting and the person that I'm going to have the meeting, suddenly I ask, how are you doing? And it show a sad expression on the face. Maybe it's not the best time to bring any topic. Maybe it's the time to say, are you okay? Anything going wrong? Well, this morning I found out my, my dog is sick. I need to put it to sleep. And that is a chance, that is a bridge to build a relationship with that person. If you mm -hmm. wouldn't miss that, if you wouldn't see that, you would have lost it. And right. you would jump on business side and the person would be present. And Emmy Cotty says in her book, Presence, and she talks highly about that. It's a, it's a book that I recommend with women and men too, is how being present on the moment is so important. And being right. present is the able to see your body, how you feel. If I interview in someone and that person have the, 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 the arm crossed to the point that I can see why in the knuckles, that person is not close to me. It's nervous. It's so afraid to the situation. And doesn't matter how much expertise you have, you always face situations where you're nervous and you feel uncomfortable. So right. if the other person can address it and says, okay, I see that you're nervous, let's relax. You want a coffee, you want a glass of water, you want to go for a power walk and we can have the meeting walking. Another one thing that I incorporate later is when I need to have a meeting with people, I try to walk. So I bring right. my, sometimes I wear in a suit with tennis shoes and like, what are you doing? Like, we're going to go for a power walk meeting. And people open, they start talking, they're talking about the weather, what they like to do. And before we realize, we're talking about business in a way that this was one of the best meetings I ever have. Why? Because I didn't feel that we have the desks to separate us to talk about business. So through the words, through reading faces, to knowing the body language, to knowing the micro expressions, to know the personality types, you can build strong, better, and more, more pleasant relationships. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, most people doesn't understand that when you need to go to work, you spend more time with people that you work with than the, the time you spend in your house. So true. So true. And and that's one of the reasons why it's good to be a good interviewee slash interviewer. And I, I say to my clients, you're not just, you're interviewing, yes, and you're the interviewee, but you're also interviewing the company. You're also interviewing the manager to see if this is something, um, if the job is a good fit and if the management is a good fit. Because, like you said, you spend more time commuting to work, going to work, being at work, and coming back home from work than you do with your own family. So why would you spend the majority of your day in a place that you can't stand to be in? And so one of the best ways to get through that is to make sure that you are selecting the company, the job, and the management that's the right fit for you. Yeah, it's a two-way interview. People think they are being interviewed, but you interview in the company that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is it? It's on the PDF that you sent to your 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 audience. 
Do you know that only 64% 60, of the people do not negotiate their salaries? But the worst part, 57% of the men negotiate their salaries. Only 7% mm -hmm. of the women negotiate their salaries. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're afraid if they would want to negotiate salary, they're going to think that we're too greedy. When men, they don't have any problem with that. So we still today, 2019, we have difference on the approach. Yes, that is true. I'm, I'm actually among the 7% because <laughs> I can ask oh. you. The worst thing they can do is tell me no, um, because nine times out of ten, if they really want you, they're going to counter with with another rate. And also, if they are rating me too low based on what the mean salary is in my area for this, then it's not worth me going there, because that means that they don't. It, sometimes they can't afford it, but then it's like you don't value my skills, so I'm putting myself out here for less than what I'm worth, and someone else would be willing to pay it. And so I, I tell my clients, look, the worst thing they can say is no, and then everything is not always about the dollars, too, because your salary and your whole package are benefits, too. So, you know, if I can get more flexibility, I might be able to wiggle a little bit on the salary just a little bit. If I can get stock options, what are the other things that I can get that, you know, may make this salary being lower just a little bit more palatable to me? So there are, you know, other things as well as the, the, the bottom line salary that you can negotiate that will be a part of your overall benefit package. 